Well, hello and welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 1 Samuel chapter 9, and if I were to give this one a title, it would be, When Do People Come to You? When Do People Come to You? I was talking to a guy the other day, and he was frustrated because he said, it seems like the only time people come to me is when they have a question about something to do with finances. And he just was talking about it, and he was talking about how he was feeling a little bit used, you know, and I, I understood what he was saying. But then I tried to tell him on the other side, but do you not also realize it's because you, sir, are a genius? <laughs> I mean, do you realize that the things that you take for granted are not normal? The, the way you can process information, the wisdom you have with finances, the reason why people come to you is because they trust you. They trust that when they come to you, you're going to know what to do. And he never really thought about it like that. And it really actually was super encouraging to him to say, you know, I didn't think about that. That when people come and ask me a question about finances, about what they should do to here or there, it's because they trust me. And I want to say this, ask this question to you. When do people come to you? We're going to think about that. And we're going to dive into it a little bit more in today's chapter. But before we do that, as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the, po- the YouTube channel. We are getting so close to our road to 1,000 so exciting. Thank you so much for helping us do that. So I just, I love it. Thank you for sharing. I see some of y'all sharing on social media. I love it so much. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you are leaving us a five-star review. It really does help. And then let's all gather together at the Facebook group, Bible Breakdown Discussion. I've had some of you ask me about If you're listening, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, things look a little bit different. We're in the process of trying out some new stuff for a quote unquote studio for us. And so you'll see that pretty soon. Really excited about that. I want to throw out a big thank you to everybody who is helping me with that right now. So thank you so very much. And people have asked me recently, they said, uh, Pastor, how can I help you with the podcast? First of all, thank you so much for doing that. I am very thankful that you're willing to do that. Secondly, some of you have asked me about setting up some kind of a Patreon just because you want to financially help. Thank you for that. But I will tell you the number one thing you can do to help us right now is to share this podcast with other people. The goal of this podcast is to create a community of people that just rally around God's word. I can't think of anything more important in the generation we live in right now than to reinvest the power of God's word. Because when we read God's word, we get to know him more. This is how God has revealed himself to all of us. And so the very best way you can help us right now is to pray for us and to share this, whatever, (laughs) YouTube, podcast, however you get this, share it with somebody and just say, hey, I want to hear what your takeaway is from today. Because, man, the more we dig, the more we find. All right, so if you got your Bibles, open them up with me to 1 Samuel chapter 9. We're going to get into this question, when do people come to you? It's a very self-assessing comment. You know, if you say no one ever comes to me, well, think about it for a moment. What some people ask you questions on occasion about something. What is it? When is it? Where is it? What, what is that that God is doing in your life? Because it may help you to understand how God has empowered you to make a difference. And we're going to see that today in the life of Samuel. And it's this amazing story that's going to happen as God starts to reveal who the next king is going to be. And that's important. Because in the middle of all of these stories, we realize that God is going to have his way. The overall idea is God's providence, despite our foolishness or despite our silliness. And what by that, what we mean is, is no matter what's going on in our life, God's with us. He is for us. And even despite us sometimes, he's always leading us where he wants us to be. God has a plan. And we're going to see this plan unfold in kind of an odd way today as we read about this guy named Saul and how he is going to have a permanent impact on the nation of Israel. So if you're ready, let's read about the first king of Israel, Saul, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. Here we go. There was a wealthy, influential man named Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. He was the son of Abil, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekroth, the son of Ahif, of the tribe of Benjamin. His son Saul was the most handsome man in Israel, a head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. That's what we call a tall drink of water. Come on now. Verse 3. One day, Kish's donkey strayed away, and he told Saul, Take a servant and go with you and go look for the donkeys. So Saul took one of the servants and traveled through the hill country of Ephraim in the land of... <laughs> I can't say that word. Uh, 
Shalishash. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, I'm just going to spell that one. I, you know, pause, pause, pause. We have read through so much of this together, but that right there might be the most difficult word I've ever seen. Shilishah. Shilishah. Okay, All right, let's keep going. Uh, Shilishah, the Salem area, and the entire land of Benjamin, but they couldn't find the donkeys anywhere. Verse 5. Finally, they entered the region of Zuf, and Saul said to his servant, Man, let's go home. By now my father will be more worried about us than about this donkey. But the servant said, Wait a minute, I've just had a thought of something. There is a man of God who lives here in this town. He is held in high honor by all the people because everything he says comes true. Let's go find him. Perhaps he can tell us which way to go. But we don't have anything to offer him, Saul replied. Even our food is gone, and we don't have anything to give him. Well, the servant said, I have one small silver piece. We can at least offer it to the man of God and see what happens. In those days, if people wanted a message from God, they would say, let's go ask the seer, for the prophets used to be called seers. Verse 10, all right, Saul agreed, let's try it. Then they started into the town where the man of God lived. As they were climbing the hill of the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water. And so Saul asked, and his servant asked, is the seer here today? Yes, they replied, stay right on this road. He is in the town gates. He has just arrived to take part in a public sacrifice up at the place of worship. Hurry and catch him before he goes up to eat. The guests won't begin eating until he arrives to bless the food. Now, by the way, a public sacrifice doesn't mean anything weird or horrible. It's just where they would worship God as a community. So they would sacrifice an animal as an act of worship. And that's what they would do. When I read that, I was like, whoa. But no, it is all about them just worshiping God as a community together. And they would have Samuel kind of officiate that worship of God. Verse 14. So they entered the town, and as they passed through the gates, Samuel was coming out toward them to go up to the place of worship. Now, the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be the leader of my people, Israel. He will rescue them from the Philistines, for I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard their cry. And when Samuel saw Saul, that's kind of hard to say, the Lord said, that's the man I told you about. Get him. No, no. That's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. Verse 18. Then Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and said, or asked, can you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up to the place of worship ahead of me and we will eat there together. And in the morning, I will tell you what you want to know and send you on your way. And don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. And I am here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all of Israel's hopes. Pause. Can you imagine someone saying that to you? That like, if you live in the United States of America, and we have a few people who listen abroad, but if you live in the United States, can you imagine all the hopes of our entire country rests on you? Whoa. It's like just, just, just settling on you. Verse 21. So Saul replied, But I am... Only from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking like this to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servants into the hall and placed them at the head of the table, honoring them above the 30 special guests. Samuel then instructed the cook to bring Saul the finest cut of meat and the piece that had been set aside for the guest of honor. So the cook brought in the meat and placed it before Saul. Go ahead and eat it, he said. I saved it for you even before I invited these others. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. And when they came down from the place of worship and returned to the town, Samuel took Saul up on the roof of the house and prepared a bed for him there. At daybreak, the next morning, Samuel called to Saul, Get up. It's time that you were on your way. So Saul got ready, and he and Samuel left the house together. And when they reached the edge of town, Samuel told Saul to send his servant on ahead. And after the servant was gone, Samuel asked, or said, stay here, for I have received a special message for you from God. Wow. Can you imagine leaving your home just to run a few errands? And while you're there, you find out you're going to be the next president of the United States. Well, I don't know about you. I would say, no, thank you. <laughs> but in this situation, they needed a leader and God found the leader. And I think that's amazing. And we're going to find out tomorrow what Saul thinks about this. But I want to pause and go back to Samuel. 
when they had lost their their donkeys and they were looking for them, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You know what? Let's go to this this guy because he seems to have a connection with God. When when people talk to him, they hear from God. Can you imagine having that kind of reputation? That person knows how to hear from God. So when I really need to hear from the Lord, I'm going to go talk to so-and-so. So I want to ask this question to you again, something to think about throughout this day, something maybe to, to ponder over, as we would say in Alabama, something to percolate about for a little while. And that is, how do other people perceive you? What do other people come to you for? I think it's a wonderful thing. Now, you could go to this on the, on the negative side and say, why do sometimes people avoid you? <laughs> but let's do it the other way. Maybe God has gifted you and empowered you to do some amazing things that you don't realize. When people ask you to pray for them, you know why they're asking you for that? It's because they trust that you will. When people ask you a question about the Bible or a question about a relationship or, or ask you to help them with something, you know, don't be so quick to think it's because they're a user or a taker. Maybe it's because they trust that if they ask you, you're going to be able to help them. So I want to ask this question again. What do people, why, when do people come to you? Is it possible that God has gifted you for ministry? And the way that you can tell is by what people ask of you. You think it's normal. You think everybody's good at that, but they're really not. It's really God's gifted you. I love the idea that when they needed to know and hear from God, they were in trouble. They said, let's go find Samuel because Samuel can hear from God. Let that be what people say about me. Let that be what people say about you. That when I get in trouble, let me go find Pastor Brandon. Let me go find so-and-so because that person knows how to hear from God and they're going to help me get a step closer. That's amazing. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your gentleness, your mercy. You walk with us. Lord, when we walk through this life sometimes, we all have blind spots. We all have things that we struggle with. But God, I pray you open our eyes to see the bright spots. Open our eyes to see the areas that you've gifted us to make a difference. So God, we can make that difference for you. We thank you, God, that you have empowered us to make a difference together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, don't forget, God's word says in 1 Samuel chapter 12, be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Think of all the wonderful things he has done for you. God's got a plan for your life. And sometimes despite our own silliness and foolishness, he's still going to get us where we need to go. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for 1 Samuel chapter 10. 